Welcome to Modern Entrepreneur. Today we have Nathan Jin, who co-founded Ripe.io in early 2016 and served as the head of product there. And they won all sorts of awards for their ag tech software. While there, he led the product from conception to completion of three successful pilots, including the Blockchain of Tomatoes project and uh, one of the first pilots in the world to implement blockchain in the food supply chain. Now he started another supply chain tech company called Ivy Food Tech, which aims to be the information exchange platform for the food system by eliminating redundant paperwork and creating a new way to trust your vendors' vendors. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Blockchain for tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about how you feel like the blockchain is going to help um, our food supply network. So the food industry has kind of grown up as this really antiquated monster of maximizing yields, minimizing information, and really the only information that's transferred through supply chains right now is cost. Mm -hmm. Price is everything. Price mm -hmm. dictates what people buy, and there's not a lot of information transfer along other actors. Mm -hmm. But if we could coordinate the information between different people, say, sourcing information, cold chain information, temperature data along the way, what chemicals or processes were used, we could get a much better picture of the food system and identify where the inefficiencies are. Uh, you hear the statistic that like 40% of food in the US is wasted every year. Mm -hmm. The report for that actually said, yeah, maybe, but we don't actually know where those inefficiencies are because we don't have enough information to tell. Mm -hmm. And so blockchain can serve as kind of a recording ledger for the information capture. Uh, but that's all it is. And I want to be clear about that's all it is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do all this like magical supply chain transparency and all that stuff by There's itself. No tomato ICO. <laughs> no tomato ICO, uh -huh. yeah. It's just a recording ledger for data, and that data could be bad when it goes in. And so um, what is the role that you intend to play in this process? So we've shifted from what we were doing before at Ripe, and what we do now at Ivy is we focus on how information transfers between directly between two different people, mm -hmm. and that's a pretty manual process. People are still faxing, people are uh, filling out single-use web portals, and basically if I sell, like, a tomato, mm -hmm. and I sell it to 10 different people, I'm going to 10 different people's sites and mm -hmm. sending them the same information about that. Right. That's a super labor laborious problem that we're trying to solve. So it's not real, what we're doing now is not a blockchain. It's not a blockchain. Yeah. We think that there's integration down the line in terms of certificate validation, like mm -hmm. if you get certifying bodies on board and have a digital signature mm -hmm. for certificates and documents that are passed through our system, mm -hmm. that's a use case, but besides that, we're not. Mm -hmm. And how do you propose to get um, these uh, sort of archaic behemoths to get on board with mm -hmm. a 21 year old's um, random blockchain tomato idea. <laughs> you tell them that uh, we're not selling the future, we're selling a problem you have today, which is why am I filling out the same form to send to 10 different people? The blockchain is in the background. That's right. not something we, it's there because it helps the system, right. but it's not the selling point of the system. The selling point of the system is you've hired one to two full-time people just to chase this paper trail. Does it feel like it's got uh, the so same sort of challenge that any network-based business would, where you need to kind of get all the players on board in order for there to be value there? No, so our initial application has kind of a linear growth pattern, it's not, uh, because we can solve the need for one person's burden of sending those documents to all their customers mm -hmm. or receiving those documents on the ingredient side and reception side. So for individual users, and this is something we really focus on, is how do we design for individual users to have value? Mm -hmm. Because when you have a network, it'll be great for the network to see these like large scale benefits, but in order for me as an entity to buy from you, mm -hmm. I want to have value. And yep. you have to design for that, mm -hmm. and so that's what we're that's what you're going to do. What do you think that um, your older self would tell you if they could right now about how to make your, um, your next steps smoother? Um, is to be more comfortable with uncertainty. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got into college and before I started doing all this stuff, um, I was very on like the checklist for success. You go to school, you go get good grades, you get an internship, you go on a career path. Mm -hmm. uh, I was never the kind of person to be like, oh, I want to do my own business, I want to be a CEO, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then when I started doing all this entrepreneur stuff, uh, that had to change, right? There was no longer a set formula of 
if you check these boxes, you will succeed because mm -hmm. that doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. If it was that easy, a lot of people would be doing it. And even now, even though we've won national awards for what we did in the prior company, uh, it's still that kind of uncertainty and that kind of fear that mm -hmm. I have to face constantly. Yeah. Uh, and becoming more comfortable with that is really important. Yeah, and what do you think it's going to be that will get you through the sort of valley of darkness that stands between you and, and you know, getting thousands <laughs> of people to use this software that you're building? Continue to learn mm -hmm. is really important and being able to talk to people about what their problems is. Because the learning from my prior company was really that build something that the world wants and not something that you think the world wants. Because what we were doing before was pretty much what the, we thought the world wanted, but I don't think the world's ready for that. Mm -hmm. um, we need to solve problems that are real problems for people today. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting, for me, getting customer validation, talking with these supply chain managers and hearing their pains and hearing how if we, we're not public yet, but by the time that this is uh, published, we should be and hearing how our software could solve their problems. Like mm -hmm. what we're saying is the problem that they're facing is extremely validating for me. Yeah, yeah. and that's a uh, super valuable insight and something that I certainly run across, uh, you know, run up against in my career um, more than once, which is, um, you know, imagining that I know what people want mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and spending a lot of time just uh, continuing to hit my head against the same wall in disbelief that, um, that they don't want that. <laughs> yeah, and, right. And, um, and, and finally going, all right, fuck it, I'm just going to give them what they say they want. Yeah. And, uh, and it seems to work so much better. Yeah. So, um, so good on you for having figured that out. So what do you think your unique skill set is? Uh, I think it's about being able to see all the puzzle pieces and how they can connect together in a way that people haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. So back in early 2016, when we were doing thinking about blockchain in the food system. No one had done that yet. Mm -hmm. um, the first company to actually do, say something came out like five months later. Mm -hmm. When I talked to investors, they were like, you're crazy, what would you do this for? Um, and now media is just like blockchain and food, blockchain and food, blockchain and supply chain transparency, blah, blah, blah. So the other part of that is being able to say, I know that this could work. Uh, so being able to say, yeah, there's doubt, but mm -hmm. this has potential, and this could be something real that ha could enact change. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do have a combined skill set of being able to see the technical side, the business side, and understand business side and understand things at varying levels of depth to be able to bring it all together. Yeah, are you a coder? Uh, I don't code, but I can code. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, you are you you have not yet like released. The, uh, the product that you're about to release, mm -hmm. um, but you're nearing, uh, nearing release. So it's gonna be a little bit hard to ask you what's working in your business right now. What are your plans mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to create a successful launch of this thing? It's very different for the big players, as same with entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. but um, it's also a not super technologically advanced industry. So yeah. a big burden is onboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to make that process as easy as possible. Um, with how we get documents into the system. Mm -hmm. and, but really getting customers for us is a word of the mouth process. You go to conferences, you shake hands, you talk to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting that is probably the biggest challenge that we have to face. Getting customers is always um, the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, well, good. Uh, good luck to you on that. Thank you. So, um, what do you feel like your uh, your kind of cutting edge is right now? What do you? What is the most important thing for you to learn next? So, I'm improving my coding skills. You asked me if I'm a coder. So, my background's in chemical engineering, uh -huh. uh, and then I know some amount of code. But being able to, so I do everything up to the wireframing prototyping, and mm -hmm. then do the project management, product management, and then give it to a developer to mm. actually implement. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to pick up more of that to go deeper and to that to say, I can read code now, but also say, is this efficient code? Is this mm. going to be scalable? Is this a model that we really want to go with mm -hmm. uh, moving forward? So that's what. And you think that's important because? Um, I think that it's really important to have a good strong understanding of the technology you use. Mm -hmm. Especially in an industry like blockchain and text processing and um, these kind of enterprise software things, mm -hmm. if you lose sight of what you're actually selling, if you don't know what you're selling, which may or, not, may or may not be true about a few blockchain companies, mm -hmm. um, you'll have issues down the line of 
what are you actually selling and can you communicate that effectively to your customers? Good, so I'm not even gonna bother asking you what you uh, want your legacy to be, but uh, I'm curious, I'm curious, <laughs> if, uh, like what is the motivation, apart from, apart from just like, you know, um, you know yachts and airplanes, um, w you know, what is it that, like the, the big picture motivation for you to um, invest, you know, your precious time sure. in this particular project? Sure, so I've been interested in the food industry for a really long time, so mm -hmm. I started baking in middle school, uh -huh. and I realized that Baking is science, mm -hmm. and when you understand the science, you can control the process. Yeah. So I decided to become a chemical engineer with the intention of going into food processing. Oh, wow. Uh, while I was at Berkeley, when I got there, there wasn't a student food community there. Um, it, I was told the cooking club had died a few years ago. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so I kind of grew the student food community from starting a club and then learned more about broader food systems and the challenges that are in it. Uh, worked in a little bit of food manufacturing and decided that I could enact change with this blockchain thing that happened um, and decided that we should just do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's still true now that um, I have unique knowledge from knowing all these different puzzle pieces like I was talking before mm -hmm. that we can enact some kind of change that affects people today. And specifically what is the effect that you want to have on people? Well there's two parts. One is having a tangible effect on people's everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And two is growing the people who work with me. Mm -hmm. um, in the organizations that I run, uh, like that food club, I started it from just me. And now it's 30 active people, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the largest for a student group that's not on campus in like a major form or identity base. Mm -hmm. um, and watching the people in that organization grow is really empowering for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of our platform, I like the quote that you hire programmers because the laziest programmer, because they'll find the, the way to do, they'll find the easiest, most efficient way to do something so they don't have to do it again. Mm -hmm. And you look at the food system and they're doing these repetitive manual tasks and that's just a waste of their time, mm -hmm. right? There's no reason that it should be that way mm -hmm. and we can solve that. Yeah. So um, what do you feel like it means to be a modern entrepreneur? It's really about having passion for changing something. You want to do something in the world. You have some area that you think needs to change and you have the power to change that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, Nathan, thank you so much for spending the time. Really yeah. good to meet you. Would you sign our wall? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot. <laughs>